Hello everyone, welcome back to the new workshop. So today I wanted to share in this video about my recent trip that I took. Recent, not so recent, it's been a little bit ago, but I took a class with a guy by the name of Douglas Pryor. He is a master at what he does um, with doing repose work um, and chasing. Absolutely phenomenal, you really need to check him out. His information will be down in the description down below. I'll link up his channel. He also has a channel on YouTube where he takes excerpts from his Patreon channel, which I'm a subscriber to, by the way. Uh, that is an absolutely phenomenal thing where he does half hour tutorials and things like that around chasing tools and sharing thoughts and methodology and things of that nature. So if you really want to get a good education and deep dive in it, uh, again, I'll link up his Patreon down there uh, in the description. Definitely can recommend it. I am a part of his uh, Patreon community. Um, and again, it, it's a great way of getting a direct line access and, and a asking questions that maybe you would not be able to get with another creator. So some of the things that I learned in class was about, you, you know, a lot was in the process. It was about material gathering. That, that's the biggest thing that I guess you would say is the takeaway from the class is pulling metal from one area and pushing it into the different portions of your design. Now, for those of you that have not done any repousse work or done any sort of chasing work type deal before, a lot of the chasing work that I do or predominantly mess with is stuff in solid steel. And I learned that from, you know, a master smith by the name of Tom Latney. Um, a lot of that type work, you know, you're, you're pulling away material, you're kind of pushing material away and then heaving material up. And, and you're kind of just doing this in a block of steel to give the illusion of rise or to get actually some rise out of the material. But I never did any sort of flat plate work. And so doing flat plate work has been a wonderful experience. Um, you know, like in the two pieces that I've got here in my hands, uh, these were just some example pieces that I ended up making up. Uh, these were the projects, if you will. He wanted to study the blade of, like a blade of grass or doing some grass. And uh, he said that that was a good way of learning all like the fundamental process, the building blocks of all, all the rest of the steps coming in. Um, and boy, I tell you what, super difficult. <laughs> so super difficult to wrap your mind around what we were doing here. Um, and again, just having that expert guidance along, you know, alongside me, you know, help showing, showcasing what it is that we are doing uh, in the piece. Absolutely excellent. Uh, Douglas Pryor, he hails from California. I'm not sure where, which part of California, so he's definitely as far on the West Coast as you can go. He does have classes and stuff that he teaches all around uh, the United States. Uh, so again, you can check him out if you want to get a get a in close personal thing with him, touch base that way. Uh, but yeah, so there's a clear progression from one, uh, from my very first thing I did, which was the grass, uh, which came out okay. I, I really drew too much material from the edges and tried to push too much. I, I just didn't need that much lift to illustrate what it was that we were trying to do. So that was a bit of a learning experience. And then for um, this little cherry blossom, everything, was going pretty well, except I drew it, I, I drew it incorrectly, and so therefore, uh, when I started going in after it, it was a it was a lot of work to take and pull out material where it was supposed to be to get these overlaps of petals or the looks of overlaps, um, and then I kind of messed up the center uh, stamens areas that that would be there. Uh, but then my final piece here, um, which was a daisy ended up turning out a lot better. And you know, and that's the important thing about classes um, and taking workshops and taking chances and working hard to take and constantly educate yourself in the field of blacksmithing or even stuff that's not technically blacksmithing because it's technically not blacksmithing. It's a, it's a very specific field of metal work and shaping metal and things like that. And so it's very important to take I'm saying take a lot in this video. <laughs> Anyways, it's very important to progress and push yourself outside of your comfort zone, outside of your boundaries, color beyond the lines of it, and you know, and see where you come up. This class is definitely outside of my wheelhouse, um, and I had an absolute blast, and it really helped, really helped 
put some things in perspective for a job that I needed to do that I had to do a lot of repose work and chasing and things too. So, so it really helped me out on that into things when I got back because I was just kind of like, uh, where do I begin, right? And so having expert guidance really does help. So I encourage you to take a class if you can. A lot of people, I hear this all the time, they say, hey, I can't afford taking a blacksmithing class. Um, I can't afford it all the time either, okay? So what do I do? I apply for grants and scholarships and things like that, or should I say my wife applies for me, um, and she has a way of she has a way with the words. You know, Jessica, she's great. She puts stuff on uh, paper. She puts my accolades and some of the different things that I've done over the years, and she puts it all on paper, and she gets it submitted. And, you know, you get turned down for some, um, and people, you know, other more, will, more deserving people get it. Uh, maybe people have had a little harder, you know, financial crisis on their hands. You know, I chalk it up to Providence. You know, I just didn't need to go to the class or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, there's other times that I pay for a class outright. But this particular one, in fact, was actually paid for by a BANA. I took a, I had a BANA scholarship given to me. And so this video is just a little bit of a part of that, you know, me sharing that. And, you know, organizations like that, they can't get access, you know, they can't get access to scholarship money or they can't release funds if nobody applies, right? So they may have a fund set up, a scholarship fund that's set up by who knows, and this is a lot of craft schools, they might have a scholarship fund set up, but those, but they're very specific, you know, very specific on like, hey, it actually has to be a person. You can't just like get this to put new marble floors in your house, right? Like you have to actually be educating people with this money, helping people get an education in the fields that they're interested in. And so it doesn't hurt to take and apply. You might get turned down, but that's okay. It's the nature of the game, right? Just keep applying. Um, there's all sorts of things like that. So I definitely recommend uh, the Abana. If you don't know who Abana is, I will put a link to their uh, website down in the description as well. But it's the Artist Blacksmiths Association of North America. Wonderful group. I've been a member now for four years, I think. Maybe four years. It might be three years. Uh, I, before that, I've always been a member of SOFA, Southern Ohio Forge and Anvil. But anyways, all these groups... Get in touch with a local blacksmithing community, a local blacksmith group. Get a part of your bigger chapters and apply for scholarships and things like that to go to classes if you're really serious about taking your forging and all that to the next level. So anyways, thank you, Abana. Thank you for everybody who had, you know, wrote me nice letters of recommendation, things of that nature. Um, I appreciate each and every last one of you. This was an absolutely wonderful class experience that I got to go take myself. Um, and so therefore, I can eventually teach to others once I get more proficient at means of knowing how to do this kind of work. It's going to take many more classes before I feel that uh, comfortable in, in sharing that sort of knowledge. But uh, it does, it will come out in later videos in my other type of work. So be on the lookout for that. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and stop running my mouth. I really hope you guys and, and gals out there enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video. Uh, it, you know, and hey, have you took any classes anywhere or were you particularly inspired uh, by someone to take a class somewhere and maybe that is in your future maybe you are taking a class somewhere in the future and you might even apply for a scholarship just let me know let's start that conversation down in the comment section um, and if you like this video and you would like to take and help support jessica and i with what we do here on youtube a great way of you doing that is just checking out our website black smithpdfs.com and uh, consider purchasing a power hammer plan over there. So without further ado, as always, God bless you and we will catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.